Uh, I want to give tribute really today to uh, the Palestinian women revolutionaries who have taught us great lessons and um, have uh, um, been extremely inspiring uh, uh, for us uh, in our revolutions. Um, young women in particular uh, in Egypt defied their family's wishes and went out on the streets uh, breaking away with conventions and traditions. I've heard stories of uh, young women uh, whose parents actually wanted to um, lock in their rooms at home and they uh, just uh, broke all the rules and went out and stayed on uh, uh, the streets and the squares. Um, these fantastic women uh, that you see here. Um, and uh, I think this has led to a radical transformation uh, in our uh, political consciousness, in our uh, social consciousness uh, as uh, uh, women uh, revolutionaries. Um, so when we were chanting uh, on Tahrir Square, the people want to bring down the regime, um, we were also thinking that we want to bring down with it uh, the patriarchal uh, uh, rules yes. and values. are part and parcel of dictatorship regimes, particularly the Mubarak regime who uh, always uh, thought of himself uh, as the father of the Egyptians. Uh, I mean, okay, uh, we're, we're bringing him down and we're bringing down patriarchy and uh, all the oppressions uh, associated um, uh, with, the, with the system. Uh, so, um, this uh, desire uh, of uh, bringing down uh, um, uh, the oppressions and fighting for equality and liberation uh, were actually manifested through uh, practices and actions rather than theoretical assumptions. Yeah? Uh, um, so uh, what we have witnessed and done was to live the revolutionary process uh, as women. For example, uh, uh, to uh, stay on the square um, one night after the other, even though there were extreme uh, dangers uh, from uh, the pro mubarak uh, people. Um, to bring, women to bring their uh, children, just to show to the whole world that we are peacefully uh, demonstrators. I mean, how can you bring uh, your children uh, and uh, uh, thinking uh, uh, that uh, you, you're going to um, Rest their lives in, uh, in violence or anything. So this image, the, all these images mm, um, of children uh, uh, staying uh, on the square, um, after a few days actually, uh, during uh, the 18 days, the children started chanting the same slogans that um, we were saying. Uh, for example, Hosni uh, Mubarak uh, Batil. Battle is the Arabic word for null, void, and false. Huh? And all the other figures of the regime, like the businessman Ahmed Aiz and uh, of course Gamal Mubarak. And so you find young children, Hosni Mubarak, Batil, Ahmed Aiz, Batil, and all of us actually cheering uh, after them. Uh, young children um, carrying um, posters saying to Mubarak, uh, the lesson is over, you fool. <laughs> by uh, uh, revolutionary actions and um, um, daily uh, processes and uh, practices. Um, uh, another uh, important thing that you will see uh, in these slides, uh, the women doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. for, for thousands of uh, young Egyptian women, actually, it was their first time to go uh, on uh, protests uh, during the, the first time in their life. On the 25th of January, on the 28th of January, uh, and then uh, uh, afterwards, uh, you see uh, uh, young women who had never uh, been in uh, protests before, uh, and yet uh, they were extremely resilient and coming up with so much creativity <coughs> in organizing and mobilizing, um, uh, being extremely creative uh, in um, 
the slogans and chants, this, this course of uh, uh, chants and uh, songs and lyrics, um, singing and dancing on the square. Um, so uh, there was um, a, a very visible uh, breakaway with uh, um, uh, traditions and rules and um, uh, uh, a sincere fight for equality. Um, uh, this uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, value that uh, the, the revolution indeed uh, broke out uh, to achieve equality and dignity. Uh, uh, how to feel dignity as women, uh, being on uh, the streets without anybody uh, harassing you and uh, uh, driving you away because uh, you are a woman. For example, um, uh, after uh, the revolution and when uh, women uh, became uh, very um, uh, I mean, uh, active in uh, uh, building uh, independent trade unions, uh, the, the doctors uh, and nurses um, have um, uh, organized the first strikes ever in, uh, in Egypt. And uh, one of uh, the leaders, uh, the main leader of uh, this independent <coughs> trade union uh, is uh, a woman and she's a cop as well and uh, uh, she's been extremely uh, active. Um, for example, um, uh, this um, uh, center for uh, the treatment of uh, the victims uh, of uh, uh, violence who have uh, uh, played a, a crucial role uh, during the revolution, uh, collecting accounts from uh, people who have been tortured and kidnapped and so on. Um, uh, the founders uh, of uh, this center uh, are uh, all women and so on and so forth. So what does this tell us about these Arab women who have been portrayed in the media for decades as submissive and subdued and weak? The media, particularly the Western media, have created very misleading images of Arab women, as uh, Judith uh, mentioned, um, only because many of them have chosen to uh, wear the headscarf, for example, or because uh, uh, many of them are, are uh, do not have education because they are extremely poor, for example. So the present Arab revolutions have destroyed these wrong and misconceived images uh, of Arab women forever, I hope. Um, these um, uh, images and the ideologies that are spring springing out of them uh, have also been destroyed. So during such a revolutionary moment, moment Women have left behind their fears and have crossed gender and class barriers to defend their rights uh, for freedom and dignity and social justice. <coughs> and during this great moment, we see a rise in the struggle and a consolidation of the collective demands. So we were all fighting for um, uh, our uh, uh, nation and um, uh, that uh, uh, we wanted to bring uh, down uh, the system of oppression and all this. Uh, but uh, um, also women have always uh, had specific demands of their own and we should never neglect these uh, specific demands. Um, for example, to create um, a more just legal environment uh, for women around issues of uh, uh, child custody, maternity leaves, uh, uh, divorce, which uh, Egyptian women, uh, uh, because uh, this is, I know more about uh, this in Egypt, have suffered from for decades. Mm -hmm. um, their cases in court would uh, stay uh, forever until uh, they are able to get a divorce, for example, or a child custody and so on. So um, uh, even though um, we were all united around uh, collective demands, but also um, we have to continue the fight for um, equality and liberation uh, for women. Um, so if women, young and old, Muslim and Christian, educated and illiterate have led the revolution side by side uh, with men, where are we now on the issue of uh, women's liberation uh, in the Arab world? Of course, uh, we can be confronted with uh, a stark contradiction that uh, has been repeated uh, uh, in different struggles throughout history, that during a revolutionary moment, 
uh, it is okay for women to be out and uh, to participate and so on. And then after the revolution, okay, women should go back home. That's enough. They, uh, they've done enough for, with one uh, revolution uh, and they should uh, go back home. However, to tell you the truth, I don't really see this is happening in uh, the Arab world now. Women are still at the forefront and uh, they are uh, playing um, uh, a decisive role in building, for example, independent trade unions in the popular committees. I mean, during the revolution, women uh, were running uh, the, the popular committees which defended uh, uh, the entrances uh, to Tahrir Square from uh, the Promobarak uh, thugs. Um, side by side with men, but they were um, uh, very organized and self-disciplined. This has continued. Um, women lawyers, for example, are playing uh, a very fantastic role in defending the revolutionaries uh, who have been uh, 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 jailed uh, uh, until uh, and they are facing uh, uh, military uh, cases. They are uh, imprisoned in, in military courts. Um, women are leading strikes and protests because, of course, the revolution is not over yet and we have to continue uh, with uh, uh, the protests um, and sit-ins um, and so on. So, uh, the revolutions uh, and uprisings have opened a completely new horizon for Arab women and for revolutionary socialists uh, to um, uh, organize more and to uh, mobilize and to uh, uh, build political parties and to put a lot of pressure from them. Um, so, um, who are undermining uh, this uh, leading role of women? Because uh, you uh, uh, hear sometimes uh, people saying, we don't see uh, the women revolutionaries on TV, for example, or um, uh, in the press, the pictures and so on. Uh, but actually, uh, women are not really waiting uh, uh, to, to uh, be invited to TV shows uh, and so on, because they are too busy uh, <laughs> at work fighting at their workplaces, and they are extremely visible. Their, their presence is very strong and visible uh, in the struggles at workplaces, on the streets, and so on. Uh, so it is the counter-revolutionary forces who are uh, undermining the role of women and they can always uh, raise the banner of uh, honor and shame, as uh, Judith mentioned. Traditions are so rich. Women uh, should not be on the streets like when Ali Abdullah Saleh said and the Yemeni women came back at him in a very strong way and shot him uh, completely and in the end uh, he's the one who left and they are saying and defending the revolution. and this is what has happened. Uh, so they can threaten women of rape, for example, as the Syrian, well, we see the Syrian uh, regime doing this, and uh, many Syrian families have left their villages and homes uh, to protect their wives and daughters, or as we, the, the stark humiliation that happened to Egyptian uh, women on uh, the 8th of uh, March day, when uh, the International Women's Day uh, when they arrested dozens of women and then they were subjected to virginity tests. Just imagine that this humiliation, just imagine this uh, um, uh, kind of striking at uh, the bodies who have occupied the schools, who have uh, played a leading role in uh, the revolution. This is a concrete example of the counter-revolution. Hmm? Where do you strike the woman's body, subject them to virginity tests, humiliate them, uh, treat them uh, as they, uh, according to them, we were whores, of course, uh, on uh, the squares, and when they did the virginity tests, the, the, the military police had this idea in mind, that these bodies uh, should be humiliated, uh, revenging from uh, the revolutionaries. It was a form of rape. And uh, the, these women have filed uh, lawsuits and uh, they uh, will win 
against uh, what happened to them uh, because we cannot, we cannot tolerate, we are not going to tolerate any of this uh, so I, I just really want to finish with uh, three uh, voices uh, from the revolution, young women, um, uh, just to give you a flavor of uh, how they uh, thought about uh, themselves. The first one is Mona Saif. She's 24 years and uh, she's a political activist and researcher. Um, she says, I know that Egypt has uh, changed and we will transfer the spirit of the square to the rest of the country. Before Tahrir, if I was harassed, I, was, uh, I would refrain from asking people for help because there are a lot of people that would disappoint you by blaming you. But I think the spirit of the revolution has empowered us to spread the feeling we established wider and wider. From now on, if anything happens to me, I am going to scream. I am going to ask people to help me, and I know that I will find people that will help me. The second one is uh, Jihan Ibrahim. She's 24 years also, and she's a political activist. She says, in my experience, women play a pivotal role in all protests and strikes. Whenever violence erupts, the women would step up and fight the police, and they would be beaten just as much as the men. I have seen this uh, during the Khaled Saeed protests in June 2010, when many women were beaten and arrested. Muslim, Christian, all types of women protested. And the third one is Salma al Tarzi. She's a filmmaker. She's uh, 33 years. She says, I was one of many women, young and old, there. We were as active as the men. Some acted as nurses and looked after the wounded during the battles. Others were simply helping with distributing water. But there were a great number of women that were on the front line, hurling stones at the police and the pro Mubarak thugs. When the men saw that women were fighting in the front line, that changed their perception of us, and we were all united. And it is this spirit of unity that we have to carry forward, because really, we don't have any other choice especially as women, because when the counter-revolution strikes back, it will strike back at us first. So uh, please, uh, uh, we need your solidarity. We have to uh, uh, be uh, united uh, on these issues. Thank you very much.